Good morning my dear students hope you are enjoying your online studies so are you ready for your next chemistry class that's good as we are discussing chapter matter in our surroundings and in our previous class we discussed about interconversion of states of matter by changing temperature means when we heat a solid it's converted into a liquid state and when liquids are heated they get converted into vapor state and reverse happens on cooling when we cool a gas it gets condensed into liquid and when liquids are cooled they solidify to form solids so by changing temperature we can change states of matter one into other and today we'll discuss what are some other ways by which we can convert one state of matter into other earlier we discussed interconversion of solid to liquid and then to gas step by step conversion but there are certain examples in which you can see that solid directly converts into vapor form on heating or sometimes at room temperature also for example you must have seen naphthalene balls they get disappear within few days so sometimes these solids they can directly convert into gas without leaving any residue in liquid form so this process is called sublimation and this process takes place in both the direction like solids get converted into gas and gases can also convert into solid form on cooling so let us see how it happens let us see with the help of this activity how sublimation takes place in daily life you must have observed naphthalene balls in your washrooms they slowly get smaller in size and finally disappear within few days this is because of sublimation actually solids otherwise convert into liquids on heating as you can see here but some examples like naphthalene camphor camphor balls on heating they directly convert into gaseous form so this is the process in which solids get directly converts into a gaseous state so they don't leave any residue they slowly get disappear one activity we can also perform in our lab we take some ammonium chloride in a china dish as you can see in the figure and take one inverted funnel over it ek funnel ko humne invert karke iske upar rakhna and we need to put some cotton plug on the mouth of the funnel to prevent the vapor from escaping the funnel now we start heating ammonium chloride as you can see ammonium chloride doesn't melt on heating but it directly gets converted into vapor state and these vapor start rising in the funnel and as they reach the upper portion of funnel you can see they start depositing in the form of white solid so this process is taking place side by side where the region of funnel is cooler the deposition takes place means the vapor of ammonium chloride gets deposit on the walls of the funnel and convert into solid again so this is how sublimation of solids takes place into a gas and gases on cooling again convert into solid by deposition discussed in activity that conversion of solid into gas directly without changing into liquid is called sublimation and solids which get sublime directly get converts into gas without leaving any residue in liquid state and when a gas is cooled under pressure it gets converted into solid again and that process is called deposition and various substances like camphor naphthalene ball these things you can observe in your daily life they directly sublime 
they are sublimable solids ammonium chloride iodine cut iodine crystals are purple colored crystals and they also on heating convert into purple colored vapors and dry ice as you can see in the picture dry ice is a solid carbon dioxide and uh, this is a type of substance which directly gets converted into gaseous form from that solid form so dry ice is used where we cannot use the normal ice means when we need to keep the things dry then we use dry ice for cooling purposes what happens when a gas is compressed if we apply pressure on a gas what happens so it's clear from this picture that gases have very large interparticle space as we have discussed earlier also so if we apply pressure on a gas particles start coming closer and finally a state arrive when gaseous substance convert into liquid and if we continue to compress that liquid then finally it gets converted into solid so by cooling and by applying pressure we can convert a gas first into liquid and then into solid so easily uh, we can see this example in uh, our daily life also as you can see various cylinders of uh, gases lpg oxygen so they are actually liquefied gases so liquefaction of gas can be done by applying pressure we have discussed that gases can be compressed easily so gases on compressing convert into liquids first and by applying pressure to gases we can place them in a cylinder easily and a very large volume of gas can be filled in a cylinder you must have seen lpg cylinders at home oxygen cylinders in hospitals and Uh, cng gas you must have heard about that because these days it is used in vehicles and all so all these gases are placed at very high pressure in the form of liquid state and have you ever thought what will happen if we release that pressure for example when we open the knob of lpg cylinder at home and it helps to cook the food by applying uh, by burning that gas over there so there it again converts back into gaseous state so when we release pressure gases changes into liquid uh, liquids that liquefied gas changes into gases form again but there are some more examples like carbon dioxide it doesn't liquefy rather when it is cooled at high pressure it directly converts into a solid form and this solid form of carbon dioxide is called dry ice that we had seen in the last slide and dry ice is actually used where we cannot use normal ice because normal ice when it melts it will wet the substance where it will use jahan usko aap use karoge wo cheez wet ho jayegi but dry ice so called because it keeps the substance dry because it doesn't convert into liquid form and as it doesn't convert into liquid form it doesn't wet the surface in which it is in contact with so it's very important that dry ice doesn't wet the object where it is kept because it directly gets converted into gaseous state when it is exposed to air at one atmospheric pressure because when it is formed the pressure is very high and when the pressure is released it gets converted into co2 gas carbon dioxide gas again let us now summarize all these steps with the help of one single diagram let us see first we start with solid when solid is heated it gets converted into liquid and the process is called melting and when liquid is heated it gets converted into a gas and the process is called vaporization or boiling 
but when a solid is heated directly to a gas means on heating if a solid directly gets converted into a gas without changing into liquid then the process is called sublimation now we discuss the reverse means what happens when we cool when we cool a gas it gets converted into a liquid by the process of condensation or liquefaction and when we cool a liquid at a certain temperature it freezes to form solid at that process is called freezing or solidification and if a gas on cooling or on applying high pressure directly gets converted into a solid without changing into liquid then the process is called deposition or sublimation so here in this way we can see that by changing or by altering condition of temperature and pressure we can convert one state of matter into another and this interconversion of different states of matter is naturally occurring also because you can see that uh, water can exist in all three different states naturally it occurs in the form of solid it exists in the form of liquid as well and it exists in the form of gas as well in vapor state and we can carry out these interconversions by altering pressure and temperature of a particular substance and it's also very important a substance how it will exist in room uh, at room temperature this is also because of the pressure and temperature at which it is kept for example if we change the temperature of water below 0 degree celsius obviously it will change into solid state means it will exist in the form of ice and when we heat water or when we increase the temperature of water beyond 100 degree celsius it will directly or it will convert into vapor state so this is very important that existence of state of matter depends on two things that is pressure and temperature hope you all the things are clear to you all so now you are able to solve the assignment as well thank you have a nice day